Welcome to Fast Pace, the new growth leadership and management podcast featuring Josh Vegan and Dean Mackey. We wanted to peel back the layers on what happens in the world of fast-paced real estate agencies, from new leadership models to the management challenges we all face each day. This is about a new era in the estate agency sector. Rapid changes to business models, service lines, remuneration, and growth present the greatest opportunities that we've ever seen. Sit back, get inspired, grow your skills, and reimagine what's possible with Fast Pace. Every Friday, wherever you get your podcasts, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Josh Vegan Digital. In order to have a great business, it's really important that you manage the cash flow. Dean, let's talk a little bit about what actually happens inside of lots of different business cycles. We know that sometimes in business, we're really flush with cash. Sometimes we make investment decisions and when there's not as much cash about. And sometimes for businesses, there's actually that tax bill and that usually only happens once inside of someone's career where it causes a few issues where you actually really understand that you need to understand the importance of what it actually takes to run a great business, particularly from a cash flow perspective. Dean, you've been through all the different stages of growth in the many businesses you've been involved with. What's important for people to be looking at to make sure that they can master the whole cash flow conversation? Yeah, good on you, Josh. I think um, when, when you say tax, tax uh, bill issues, I think that happens more than once in people's careers. And, and it mainly happens because our cycle is actually almost in reverse to what actually happens. So when, you know, often we'll be in a, in a decent market, plenty of cash coming in and people aren't really ma- necessarily managing their cash flow that well, thinking it's just going to keep coming in. You know, if you have a market downturn, your volume drops off, all of a sudden your money stops coming in and the following year, often, often your tax is due, right? So that hurts a lot of people. And I think it catches people out uh, in most most uh, downturns. So, um, some of the things I've learned over the years, mainly, is that you know ca- managing your cash flow is is all about uh, keeping an eye on your costs and also making sure you've got money to invest in, in growth, if that's what you're up to, and and really to avoid you know any sort of shortages um, uh, that may or may not be on the horizon. So, really having a good handle on both your historical costs and also your forward operating costs um, have a very uh, a, a very big impact upon on on this particular topic but you know if, if you if you've got a process where you're doing sort of moni- you're monitoring your and reviewing your, you know your settlements versus your listings versus your cash at bank then generally you should be okay and and then having some disciplines around how and when you take money in or out of the business is also quite important so for example in our business um, if if we've got um, some profit sitting in the business and we do do um, uh, focus on, on on generating profit, of course, then you know once a quarter we may distribute um, uh, um, distributions to our team. But we also have a really good look at again, you know, what are, what are our, what are our listings look like? Um, what are the, what do the bills look like? What are the settlements coming up? And we'll generally try and have at least four months or so cash on hand of of forward operating costs that should get us through with all things being equal. You'll have other settlements coming in along the way. And and, and as long as we've got that in the bank, we will typically flush out another 50% of whatever's in the bank, right? And so then that way you sort of be able to keep a handle on making sure that you've got your eye on the prize, what's in the account, what's not, what's going on, and you're not getting yourself caught out with any surprises. Because there are, are often things that come up that we just didn't anticipate. Um, and if you and if you're not sitting on the on the right amount of you know, cash, then, you know, you can get yourself in trouble. So, Dean, one of the interesting conversations around a contribution margin, so understanding, you know, how much of your fixed costs are fixed, for example, out of the revenue that you might get out of an investment management or the property management section of your business. And when you go and buy a, a competitor out, let's say you buy a couple of hundred properties under management, um, the interesting conversation there is that now all of a sudden you're getting cash flow from that, but you've also got debt to go and service. How important is it for businesses to have a bit of an objective to potentially pay down some of that debt so the revenue that's actually coming in from the property management business can actually contribute to a, covering the fixed costs and ideally getting them into a position of actually making profit. Yeah, it depends on your strategy really. You know, if, if you're wanting to use c- cash, free cash to grow, uh, perhaps you, you may not be paying down uh, debt. Um, however, if you, if you, if you and it, again, it's, it's all, all, all based on your own circumstances, but if you cho- do choose to pay down debt, and we've, we've chosen to pay down debt too, you also have to realise that the pay down of debt also is the requires you to make sure you've got your, you know, your, uh, your money for your tax because you know, when you pay down debt, it's considered to be that you've actually received that money as a distribution. So what often people will do is they'll pay down the debt and then all of a sudden they think, oh, God, hold on, I've got to pay tax on that and I didn't allow for the, for the tax. So what we also do now, we actually, uh, to help 
us with our own internal planning. So it's not just cash flow planning for the business, but cash flow planning for the, the shareholders or, or, or whomever is to say, well, we'll actually frank dividends now. So then that way, when it gets in your hands, you don't have to worry about paying the tax at a later point. Mm-hmm. So they're the, the little things, but they become important because if, if you've got people in the business who haven't allowed for their taxation or they haven't allowed for those things, all of a sudden they're trying to find out, how do I get money out to pay my tax? Uh, and then that may put pressure on the cash flow of the business if they have to drag that cash out and they haven't planned for it. And that's a really important conversation because it always hits at the wrong time, as you're saying. You've just been through a boom. Things are great. Counter cyclical. All of a sudden, the market comes off and then they're hitting you for a tax bill for some other provisions. And also, to make sure you've got a great relationship with your bookkeeper or your accountant, whoever provides your financial advice. So in your monthly income activity statements and certainly what you're doing with your BAS statements, that you're paying enough in advance. So then you don't get any nasty surprises when it actually comes to tax time. And I think that's a really important thing for businesses. Um, I, I'm a small business compared to you, Dean, um, but I always go and have a quick look. I've got a, a, a tax savings account. So I have an amount that every week automatically goes into a tax savings account before I do anything else. So that when it comes to pay those items, the income activity statements, the BAST, any of those things, there's always plenty left over in that account to make sure that all of those things are covered. And I find if you do that, you just run a really good quality business. And what a lot of people don't realise, some of the issues are, is that when you have a tax repayment place in program with the uh, tax office, that actually causes some substantial issues in terms of your mortgage borrowing capacity when you go to get a loan. And also too, what happens with a lot of directors is Sometimes they'll take some money out, a thing called Division 7A, where they're actually just taking money out of the company and thinking that's going to be okay. But that comes back to bite you at some point. You do actually have to pay those funds back because you actually haven't paid tax on it. So it's a really important thing. Get across what cash flow is actually happening in your business. Understand seasonality too. I know, Dane, you operate in some markets which do really well Mm. over Christmas and Easter periods. And you also operate in some markets which are non-coastal that that don't do as well during those periods. And so putting initiatives around that is a really important part to actually drive the success of the business over time. Yeah, I, th- I think you're, you're right, Josh. Um, you know, having stability versus your unexpected surprises is really what you've got to get a handle on. So having some, you, you mentioned it before, having a good accounts team or team that can support you, that can give you, furnish you with good reports on a monthly basis uh, and, and also on a quarterly basis for you to sit down and make decisions on. Um, because, you know, you're really looking at your cash flow forecast versus your business plan and you know, your projected cash in inflows versus outflow. So having all of those things sort of thought through and anticipating you can plan for it. And there are different levers you can pull for different things depending upon what your objectives are. I think the other conversation is too, you know, when interest rates went up just on houses, they also went up on business loans as well. Mm. And so all of a sudden, you know, what you thought were fixed costs all of a sudden all of a sudden weren't fixed anymore and they became variable. And I, I saw recently um, our electricity bill, for example, it's up by 23%. It doesn't sound a lot because we're not a big industrial firm, but the reality of it is when things that you thought were fixed all of a sudden start to become variables, you've got to make sure you've got plenty of cash sitting oh, inside of that mate, business. Mate, breaking it down, like you, you talk about fixed costs, if you can actually understand what is your fixed cost per month, so you actually got an, an average there, Mm. And then reverse engineer and say, well, what income do we need to write to actually cover those fixed costs? In your own head, you can quickly then calculate, are you in front or are you behind? And you can only sustain it if you're behind for a certain period of time, unless you've actually got some good cash reserves. Um, alternatively, you know if, in fact, you've, you're above that, then potentially there's going to be some good cash that can flow out of the business, you know, at the end of the quarter. So best thing that you can do, sit down with your financial advisors, really understand the ins and outs of your business, get clear about what those business objectives look like and make sure that you've got plenty of cash in a savings account for a rainy day because rainy days do happen.